Shalom family. So lots happening in Israel. We have not seen a build up to an outbreak of extreme chaos like this since Iran last retaliated with that massive drone strike and missile strike on Israel. Hugely embarrassing for Iran that pretty much everything was intercepted and many other countries came to Israel's aid in that situation. But God, God is in control and God watches over Israel. And unlike the other gods of the nation, small g, our God does not slumber or sleep and sees all right and he's a promise keeper he is a way maker he's a miracle worker and the nations are only very slowly starting to realize this or remember these things that have happened in the word of god egypt and all these places should look back at their history and remember who they're dealing with here but as we read in the book of revelation and we see in daniel and other parts of the uh, first covenant the old testament that the nations don't learn and the people still mock and curse god regardless of anything that lies ahead which is really sad so that being said again we're at that point now that tipping point as we were just before october 7 october 6 was a normal day everyone did not expect what happened on october 7 and then the world changed drastically and then Iran retaliated with that massive strike on Israel as well. And then since then, thousands of rockets that have been fired from Hezbollah into northern Israel, forests burnt down, homes evacuated, people killed, the whole thing that's going down in Gaza, the terrorists being eliminated, Hamas that's refusing to give back the hostages. And it's an ongoing crisis while the world turns gradually, and by gradually I mean by the hour, more and more and more anti-Semitic, anti-Jew, anti-Israel, anti-Zion, anti-all of it, as prophesied by God Most High as it should be at the end of the age. The time just before Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week, not the churches, not the redeemed, not us that are going before because we are not ordained for wrath. Right, so having said all that, let's dive in. And there's quite a bit to cover here. I've got all the latest things that I think you need to know with the build up to what could possibly blow up today or tomorrow and why you need to be praying for Israel a lot right now. Netanyahu addressed the nation. Israel has struck crushing blows against Iran's axis of evil, taking out top terror commanders. In a dramatic presentation, he said he is keeping the vow he made to the joint session of the U.S. Congress last week. Israel will strike crushing blows against the Iranian regime and, and their axis of evil, namely Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and the Houthis in Yemen. Netanyahu proudly and defiantly declared that in recent days and hours, Israel's military forces have successfully attacked and killed three of the most evil, most deadly, and most dangerous terrorists in the world. So that's, of course, all facts, and it's all happened. They're beginning a massive attack on this axis of evil, and the world is not happy. Hamas threatens retribution in Israel and abroad. Hamas military arm published a statement lamenting and condemning the heart-wrenching act of elimination against Ishmael Haniyeh. The Iz ad Din al Qassam Brigade's Hamas military arm published the statement mourning the elimination of Ishmael, which they refer to as heart-wrenching act of elimination and a Nazi crime. They shouldn't be saying Nazi crime because they like Adolf Hitler, and Adolf Hitler is a Nazi, so ergo they should be pro-Nazi crime. The enemy will pay for its aggression with blood in Gaza and the West Bank and within its monstrous entity and anywhere our people's Mujahids can reach, the organization added. This while they're trying to stop themselves from being pushed into extinction at the final stretch of this war in Gaza against Hamas. Israelis brace for a thousand rocket multi-proxy attack. Sworn enemies, the armies of both countries, have trained for such a scenario. That's Israel and Iran. 
the twin assassinations of two prominent anti-Israeli terror leaders hours apart early this week have brought this scenario closer to what it has ever been before. The chance of Iran not responding with an attack is slim. The big question is what the ramifications of such an attack will be and if, similar to April, it will be contained in a minor way. If Israel will be dragged into a wider conflict, the more substantive threat is from Hezbollah, but a multi-front confrontation is on the agenda. If Israel is attacked, we certainly will help defend Israel, said Lloyd Austin from the US on Wednesday. You saw us do it in April. You can expect us to do that again. Now, the difference here is you might say, you know what, Shalter, they, they've been fighting a multi-front war all the time. Amir keeps mentioning this. Other people mention this. We see attacks from Yemen, from Iraq, from Syria, from all sorts of places coming against Israel all the time in the West Bank. You know, all these places, Judea and Samaria, that's where that is, and Gaza and all these places. Yes, they have. But these are small, little attacks. Not that that makes them less consequential or less shocking or upsetting to any of the locals. What they mean now by multi-front war is a sustained attack from that direction all the time. So Hezbollah non-stop firing rockets, attacking, shooting and fighting without pause. At the same time, Syria attacking and fighting and firing rockets without pause. At the same time. Do you get what I'm saying? Yemen non-stop sending all of that non-stop at the same time firing attacking Iran Iraq all these Arab nations at the same time that is what they mean by a sustained multi-front war that they could be facing right now the ideal here and their aim here is to overwhelm um, all the aerial defenses of Israel so that they cannot stop everything that's coming in. And in their minds, that would be the perfect situation. And they will then start causing significant damage to civilian lives and Israel's morale as a whole. Non-Western nations slam unacceptable, shameful, Haniyeh killing. This is an absolutely unacceptable, unacceptable, sorry, political murder. And it will lead to further escalation and tension. Russia's deputy foreign minister. These are the people that planned October 7. The rape and murder of women, old people, children, babies, everything. But it's shameful and unacceptable that these people that know that they have a death sentence on their head for this attack. And that Israel is coming for them. Now that Israel has got them, it's shameful. And it's political. Non-Western nations are condemning that assassination. Um, Turkey's foreign minister. Now, we're not surprised with anything out of Turkey these days. We condemn the assassination of the leader of Hamas political office, Ishmael Haniyeh, in a shameful assassination in Tehran. Iran's newly installed president, Masoud Pezeskian, in case you were wondering where he stands, we will make the occupying terrorist regime regret its action, he said. Iran will defend its sovereignty, dignity, reputation, and honor. China also condemned the assassination, warning that it will lead to further instability in the regional situation. So obviously all the usual suspects are screaming and shouting and saying how wrong this was that Ishmael Haniyeh has died. World War Three alert. Iran says it will conduct special operations to take revenge on Israel. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei vowed that Iran would take revenge for Haniyeh's killing, which Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the U.S. had not been involved in or informed of in advance. We didn't do it. We weren't involved. They never told us nothing. Please leave us alone. Powerful statement there. Uh, absolutely. Well done, dude. With this action, the criminal and terrorist Zionist regime prepared the ground for harsh punishment for itself. And we consider it our duty to seek revenge for his blood as he was martyred in the territory of the Islamic Republic of Iran. This is Khamenei. Iran has raised the red flag of revenge over the dome of the Jamkaran Mosque 
following the Israeli assassination of Hamas leader Ishmael Haniyeh. Do you remember how the Russians called it a special military operation? <laughs> That's their reference to the whole Ukraine war, right? Now the Iranians are using the term, birds of a feather obviously, saying special operations to describe what they have planned. The response to the assassination of Hamas political chief Ishmael Haniyeh will be special operations. <laughs> the permanent mission of Iran to the UN said on Wednesday. Oh my word. It will indeed be special operations, harder and intended to instill deep regret in the perpetrator, it wrote on X. The statement came hours after Haniyeh was killed in an airstrike in the Iranian capital. Iran has already told the United Nations they are covered and they are allowed to retaliate for this attack on their soil and the UN says absolutely. Right, but we won't go into the UN having any sort of credibility or anything that's not against Israel. Iran's Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has ordered a direct attack on Israel. Three Iranian officials have confirmed this to the New York Times. The criminal, terrorist, Zionist regime martyred our dear guest in our territory and has caused our grief. But it has also prepared the ground for severe punishment, Khamenei's English language X account said on Wednesday. Martyr Haniye was willing to sacrifice his honorable life. Honorable? How was anything that he has done been honorable? Even if you're Muslim and is in Islam, how is any of what he has done and been a part of honorable? In this dignified battle for many years, how is it dignified to rape women, put babies in ovens, murder old people who can't defend themselves, attack civilians and slaughter them just because they happen to be born Jewish? How is that dignified battle? He was prepared for martyrdom. No, he was not. He thought he'd live forever and be covered by his buddies and has sacrificed his children and loved ones on this path. Yes, because he doesn't care at all. Evil is in control there. Iran and allies plan large scale attack on Israel within 72 hours. Bear in mind, this is 24 hours ago. Israel Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei vowed severe retribution against Israel. We considered our duty, blah, 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 direct assault, right? 72 hours. U.S. deploys 12 warships to the Middle East amidst the soaring tension. Uh, this includes the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt amphibious assault teams and over 4,000 Marines and sailors in response to escalating tensions following the assassinations of Ishmael Haniyeh in Tehran and Hezbollah's military chief Fuad Shukr, the Washington Post reported on Thursday, citing the Pentagon. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken urged all parties to cease escalating actions, a message interpreted as directed towards Israel following the killings of Shukr and Haniye. Never mind all the threats that Iran and their proxies are saying out loud that they've even approached the UN and said we have the right, we're going to attack Israel. That is the escalation they should be addressing. But no, let's address Israel. Bad Israel. Bad. Sit still while the people punch you in the face. Bad ridiculous. Hezbollah retaliates hours after slain commander's funeral. 60 plus rockets on northern Israel. Uh, the group is signaling a limited attack following Israel's killing of the right-hand military advisor to Nasrallah. You do not know what red lines you cross, the Hezbollah leader said in reference to the separate strikes in Beirut and Tehran, the latter which killed their leader. Iran, too, is mulling a direct response. Nasrallah alluded to this in the following at one point in his address. Do they imagine that they will kill Ishmael Haniye in Tehran and that Iran will remain silent? Avenging the blood of the guest is with the host. The world is waiting, read the headline of the ultra-conservative Kihan newspaper, whose editor-in-chief is appointed by Iran's supreme leader. The world is waiting for this response. And it's true. The problem is the whole world has become so anti-Semitic and anti-Israel and believing all the lies they're told by open, in-your-face terrorists and murderers 
that they are. They're waiting for the response. And unfortunately, I've got to tell you, a lot of them are hoping that Israel is flattened and wiped out. What they're not taking into account here, besides the fact that God does not sleep or slumber and is watching over Israel because he keeps his promises and his covenants for all time. Besides that, which is where the discussion should end, they don't realize the Jewish mind, if they go all out against Israel and Israel sees it's going to be overwhelmed in any way, they will weigh the option of using nukes. And yes, they have nukes. If it means their survival is threatened, they will launch nukes at the people attacking them. And the first target, in my humble opinion, would be Iran. After that, the proxies will very quickly, like little skittering dogs, go charging off into the bush to go hide. Because that is the last thing they expect is even a possibility in this landscape. They think it's going to be an easy, normal exchange war. It is not. And there's various ways I can show that to you too, but we won't get into that right now. The important thing here is pray for Israel. Pray that more and more of their hearts of stone become hearts of flesh, that scales fall from their eyes, that they realize Yeshua HaMashiach is their Messiah and turn to him while there is time before the time of Jacob's trouble kicks off. Pray for the Palestinians to continue to have dreams and visions of Jesus Christ and convert and come to his saving grace and be lifted into his glorious line. Pray for all those suffering on all sides that they can just find the strength and find God and be touched by believers that can help them in this situation. Because war is not a nice thing. For anybody, for either side. You shouldn't be praying for the side the media tells you to pray for. You should be praying for people that are suffering. You should be praying for the people that need the Lord. You don't just pray for Ukraine against the evil Russia. You don't just pray for Russia against the evil, evil Ukraine and the West. You don't just pray for Taiwan. You pray for China. You pray for all these. You don't just pray for South Korea. You pray for North Korea. You pray for the people that are duped and in these situations, all of which were once lost, just like we were. And now we are found and we have hope. These are still hopeless and desperately need that awesome, amazing hope that we have found in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So pray. Keep your eyes on Israel and stand strong because it's going to become less and less cool to show the world that you openly stand with them and pray for them and for their salvation. God bless and shalom.